Hi there, welcome to Nepi Nevis, and welcome to another portfolio update video, 23rd of March, 2024 edition. Now there is a possibility, a very strong possibility that this will be the last video in this series for a while, for at least the next two weeks or maybe a month. So I don't wanna do these videos every single week from now on, and that will free me up to do other videos uh, on other topics, maybe, on a financial year 23 videos, appendix 4C or 5B videos, or grade my trade videos, or breakout alert videos. So a lot of opportunities moving forward uh, if I don't do these portfolio updates every single week. Because to be honest with you, um, these updates don't change, or the performance of my portfolios don't change much from week to week. And that week change in the performance of my portfolios is really only down to noise. So what do you think? Uh, do you want these portfolio updates every single week? I'll leave that up to you. Leave your thoughts in the comment section of this video. Now, over the past week, I have had or made a few transactions. I completely sold out of pulling over, took a nice little profit. I think it was about 20, 25% profit in that. I paired back my training position in Superloop. I sold out of my training position in Aussie Broadband. I still have a longer term position in that company. And I bought into Tua and Fisher and and um, Pikeville Healthcare, both on the back of a breakout during the week. I did a video on the breakouts of these two companies that are released on Friday, the March 22nd. So look out for that video if you have not watched it. Now onto the performance of my portfolio during the past week, month, three months, six months, and since the start of the financial year. The thing that has surprised me when I actually did this or updated this particular table is how well everything performed in the past week. Now, I've mentioned that uh, a weekly movement in anything is really just down to noise, not completely, because some companies break out because they release positive financial news. But we're talking about portfolios and uh, benchmarks. Uh, the movement of those are because of macro stuff uh, or just it's been a good week in the markets. And it seems like that's what happened in the past week. NASDAQ or the NDQ up 2.6%, the STW, which is the ASX 200, up 1.5%, and the XSO, which is a small cap owner, is up 0.7%. My own portfolios, quality up 1.9%, smalls up 1.7%, and technical analysis portfolio up 2%. So all my portfolios performed very similarly. Now, I won't talk about one month, three month, and six month, but I've just noticed that over the past six months, uh, everything has done really well. In fact, the worst performing out of these six is the XSO, which is a small caps, which is only up 12.2%. Now, you would not be disappointed if your portfolio was only up 12.2% in a six-month period. So hopefully, your own portfolios have performed stunningly well over the past six months. My technical analysis portfolio, ha however, has taken the cake during that period up 37.9%. And since the start of the financial year, the technical analysis of portfolio is up 35.5%. And to be honest with you, I am definitely not disappointed with that sort of performance. And to be honest with you, again, I'm not disappointed with my the performance of my other two portfolios. Quality up 18.4% and small caps up 23.2%. Now, one interesting thing I found when I went through ShareSite, and I just looked at the performance of my technical analysis portfolio since the start of financial year, is just that. I've received just as much dividends uh, from my technical portfolio than you would have seen or I would have received if I just put my money into the STW, which you would think is a dividend-like portfolio or ETF. That's the ASX 200. And the majority of companies or many other companies in the ASX 200 are dividend-paying companies, like banks. Uh, the big miners are pretty big dividend-paying companies. Uh, Woolworths, um, Telstra, all those big companies give pretty good dividends, but I was just stunned to see that the technical portfolio has provided with a 2.91% dividend yield compared to the STW, which is a 3.14% dividend yield. And that is a bit of a surprise and sort of like an added benefit. Now, overall, if you take away the dividends, the technical portfolio is up 50.56%. Compared to the STW, the capital gain in that portfolio is only up 8.81%. So the one thing I did not realize this technical strategy or technical analysis strategy would provide would be any dividends. I thought the dividends would be light or small, not pretty good at this point in time. 
Now, I might have mentioned, or maybe not, I can't remember, my memory is going bonkers right now, but I might have mentioned that I am doing a little bit of experiment, and my experiment is in regards to trading on the NASDAQ and New York Stock Exchange. So what I've done is I've transferred 10,000 American dollars into my superhero account. Now, I did not transfer the money, the American money, straight into my superhero account. I actually uh, did a foreign exchange in superhero. So there's a slight fee there, not a big fee. Uh, and that means I have 10,000 American dollars to play with. And the good thing about superhero, and I think this is true for other platforms as well, it's zero transaction fees when you make a trade. And I really like that. So what I've decided to do is use my technical analysis strategy that I have employed on the ASX and see if it will work in America. There's no reason why it won't work, but possibly it won't work quite as well. So what I'm going to do is build up um, about 15 to 20 positions, fairly small positions, between $500 and $1,000 initial positions and just see how this particular strategy might work in the USA. And I've already built up seven positions right now. Now, before I really decided upon this strategy, I bought into Okta and Oracle, and those two positions were valued at $2,000. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pair back those two positions to either between $500 and $1,000. And I'm going to do that same thing with Radware. So I built up seven positions. And two of these companies I have never heard of before, Build a Bear Workshop and Radware. The other five companies I do and have heard of, Micron, Cloudfare, Okta, Oracle, and Williams-Sonoma. And what I've done is I go, I use an unusual volume um, scanner, screener, yes, yeah, screener, uh, on a website called, what's it called again? A website called uh, Finviz, and that gives me a whole bunch of companies per day where the share price has broken out or possibly is breaking out on high volume. So then I go through some of these charts looking, and you can actually see all the charts on the one page, which is really useful. And then I just find uh, a company that looks like it is breaking out. And also on the page of the company, they show all the announcements the company has released. Maybe not all the announcements, but the articles uh, that have been released um, per day. So for instance, uh, Williams-Sonoma released their quality results and there was a mountain of articles. Share price popped up a fair bit, something like 8% on the day. And then I took a position and the share price has already increased, has already increased another 7% since I took that position. So that is the best performing company right now. Uh, up 7%. The worst performing company is one of those companies I've never heard of, Radware, down 7%, but only $72 down. Um, so over the next few weeks or even the next few months, I'm going to build up this particular portfolio up to between 15 and 20 companies. I'm not going to put any more money into this portfolio. I'm not going to take any money out of that. And that way I can track the performance of the portfolio fairly easy because it has a value and I can see if it's going to go up or down. So I'll bring you the performance of this particular uh, experiment as I do these portfolio updates every single fortnight or every single month. That's all I have for this portfolio update, 23rd of March, 2024 edition. If you have any thoughts, any questions, just leave those in the comment section of this video. Otherwise, I am not a financial advisor. If you do need financial advice, make sure you seek out someone who is qualified and can speak to your own financial needs. That's it for this video. Have a good day. Bye.